Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking solar and solar panels and what better time to do it in the middle of winter. We finally got ourselves a sunny day and in lieu of having the camper here we're going to be using uh, the battery out of my boat and just replicate what we do normally for plugging your solar panels in. Okay so before we get right into the panels and comparing apples with oranges because we're not really comparing apples with apples here. Uh, we're comparing a panel that's got an MPP controller and the other panel which is the larger one I showed you is a um, PWM controller. Okay so I'm not going to go right into all the efficiency between the different types of controllers PWM versus MPPT. All I'm just going to say is that on average the MPPT devices are more efficient and that can be up to 30% more efficient and charge more efficient when comparing that to a PWM type. So the panel voltage and the battery voltage uh, should be matched in PWM systems and MPP systems, the panel series, are allowed to have higher voltage than the batteries. This means more flexibility for, for system growth and weather conditions are better for the MPPT controller as opposed to the PWM controller. Um, is that going to be better for the average Joe um, who's out there want to justify the extra cost? Well, that's up to you. Um, for me, I can, instead of having, say, two panels, um, that might be PWM, so I'm going to run a single MPP panel. It's far lighter and it's far more efficient for my application. And we're just going to have a bit of a look through it and give a bit of an example of uh, how much of a difference there are between the panels. So let's go have a look. I'm just going to do a backyard layman's approach, um, the difference between the panels, and let you guys make up your own decision. Right, so the panels we're looking at today are two types. The first one on the left came with my camper. This is a PWM uh, modulated panel and the one on the right is an MPP charge controller panel. So the one on the left, although it's slightly bigger, is only a 200 watt panel and weighs significantly more which we'll check in a minute. And the one on the right is a 250 watt panel and although I'm not denying this is going to be more efficient, most of the reason it's more efficient is because of the charge type. The point using the MPPT controller is that the one here on the right I can actually use to do lithium charging as well. The one on the left panel there, sorry, you cannot use that for lithium charging. Okay, so simulating uh, my uh, camper setup today is um, Edie, my old uh, 420S triangular. Uh, we're just going to be using the battery in that to plug our solar panel into. It's an AGM battery, uh, typical of most setups you'd have in a, in a camper or, or caravan. Uh, in my camper I use uh, 200 amps of power. Um, the boat's a lot smaller, doesn't need that amount of power and obviously it's just for starting the engine and running a sounder. But that's a different story and a different conversation another time. So on the right hand side I'm just going to check the battery voltage before we plug in our little lead. This lead here is just a little Anderson plug lead with a couple of alligator clips. I'm just going to be simulating the, um, the setup you might have on a typical input for your, for your camper or your caravan. Here I've got a little DC power meter which we can check uh, what's going in the battery and do a bit of an even uh, comparison although the, um, the Victron MPP controller that comes with the ATM panel has a lot of that functionality built into it. Um, now, you're also going to do the weight. Now, for a lot of you out there, weight saving is a pretty big thing. So we're just going to weigh the panels. And if you just make a decision solely on weight, well then I think it's a pretty easy decision. But let's have a look. Let's grab our scales out. Check the weight of each panel. Right. Okay, set the kilograms. First panel is PWM, 200 watt panel, generic one. And I'll do it both in the bag, so it's even Steven. Pull this up here, I'm just gonna just press my hand, I wanna make sure that we've got, okay, we've got that one there. 16 point, call that 16 point, 16.5, it's up and down a bit, but we'll call it 16.5. Bloody heavy though. Now, next panel is the 250 panel with the MPPT controller. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Lift him up. 
bagging all again. So sitting this one here is about 8.4, 8.5. So half the weight. Carefully down there again. Okay, so roughly 16 and a half, roughly eight and a half. It's first test. Okay, let's look in the bag. This is the uh, first panel. Might be a little bit dirty, sorry, I should have cleaned this before I packed it up, but that's what winners for. This is the first panel. Get him out of the bag here, and I'll show you once it's set up. Okay, a little look around this panel. See, like the other panel, uh, they're both monos um, in their in their construction. Difference is that the other panel has the PWM controller. This is what I'm talking about, the smart controller. This is uh, a Bluetooth one, so we've got an app to to run through the panel as well. This is what the smart controller looks like. Um, hooking it up is just a simple matter of Plug it black to black. That's why it's been white for me. So black goes into black. Uh, positive. So I'm like that. Positive and negative. And there we go. Okay. Make sure you read the instructions about how it works before you start mucking around with it. Okay. For the purpose of this test, we're going to be using the old faithful Edie. You see here. Edie. Named after mother-in-law. Um, don't ask me why. Long story. Anyway. Um, in this case, we've got a 75 amp hour AGM battery in this one. Uh, as you can see, it's relatively new. It's only been put in last season. Uh, it's a century and perfect for this as a comparison to what we're doing with our normal campus and caravans. Most people, I would assume, be using it in lithium or AGM, but for the purpose of this, we're gonna compare apples with apples as far as the solar panel goes. So let's just do a quick voltage check to see what we're getting out of this thing. So on the meter, we're going to switch it to DC. We're going to go to 20. It's not a load test, it's just a voltage test. But in this, uh, we're going to get a rough idea of the state of the battery anyway. Okay. Positive on the positive pin, negative on the negative. Sitting at 12.6, so we know that's pretty or fully charged, okay? Uh, if it's sitting around 12 volts without a load on it, you can assume it's getting down a little bit, all right? But let's plug it in and see what we get out of the panels. So to simulate uh, the camper setup with the typical Anderson plug where you plug your solar panels in, uh, I've just connected this to the battery. Now, a quick check if we want to also not have the meter, we've got our little uh, power meter. For checking the battery, we plug this one to the output side to check it. If we want to charge, it goes the other way around. We just want to check that what's battery levels are, plug them in and then hit the power button. See in this case here, we're sitting at 13.0 volts. It's telling us around 90% efficiency. We, we assumed it was pretty well fully charged, but it's down a little bit. Um, so next thing we're gonna do is uh, check what we're getting out of the solar panel. Okay, let's just check, <coughs> excuse me, let's just check the output of the solar panel. This one should be supposed to be around 20, 21 volts. Uh, we'll plug it in and have a bit of a look. Uh, so I see the output here. Got this on output again. Uh, we can push the power button. Uh, we're sitting around 21.6 volts. Um, we'll now do a check into the battery here to see what we're going to get for uh, current draw going into that watts power the whole lot. We'll have a bit of a look. All right, so the first test I'm going to do just with power is not everyone might have one of these little power meters around, so I'm just going to use my little garden variety multimeter. Uh, let's just look at voltage going into it. So, motor, uh, sorry, multimeter set to voltage, 20 volts DC. Uh, make sure you select it to the, the correct terminals, they end up blowing fuses and stuff. So we've got that on to voltage. Let's just check across the battery. Okay. Right, 12.89, 12.9 volts going into it. So we know from batteries that charging them, we're looking at about 12.8 uh, to 13.4 is, is good sort of charge for most applications. Uh, in this case, yeah, 12.9, so that's quite efficient. All right, back in. Just going to do a simple test on what current's going into the battery. So we've got the panel hooked up. We've just got our little watt meter on here. We're also going to do a simple test, which is easier for you guys. Just got the uh, ammeter hook up. We put that in series with the with the line onto the battery, and you can see here after we plug it in. So we're pumped in about 
1.3 amps okay 1.4 1.3 not too bad you know it's doing its job okay let's go look at the other panel and see if we can see any difference with it okay so the beauty of this controller is that we have its own built-in Wi-Fi so we can monitor the system from our phone or device we want to do so in the case here we're always seeing 21.6 volts so let's uh, connect this up to our uh, battery simulated our camper battery and we'll see where we go from there all right okay so first thing we're going to do is just going to plug in the lead to the smart controller right way of course okay I'm going to hook this up to our battery like so check our battery voltage as we do with the other one <clears throat> okay negative to negative battery 20 volts okay very similar to the other one 12.7 volts Check it against the app as well. Let's have a look at our app. Okay, what's our app say? So we're sitting at uh, 20.67. We get about 12 watts, 10 watts out of it, 0.8 amps into it. So pretty comparable. Just for a comparison, we'll do it exactly the same as we did the other one. So we've already checked voltage. We'll check it again just so we can do a comparison. So here we're sitting. About 13.3, uh, the other one's putting out, let's see the sun's gone away now, we're down to later in the day, um, sitting here about 3 o'clock, so it's not the peak time, we're in the middle of winter, uh, for those, leave in the comments below, what do you think the um, best time of year for charging your batteries with a solar panel, so I'll give you a couple minutes to think about that, drop in the comments and then see who's right. Okay, so there we go. Check it against the device. So we're sitting here, 12.9. Let's have a look at the, have a look at our app again. Okay, so that says 12.9. So that says about 13.3 in efficiency of the of the meter probably it's pretty close to it 12.9 13.3 so yep not too bad current 1.2 amps the other one was sitting similar we might plug that back in just give it a comparison now to see exactly what it's doing all right let's swap them back over again okay so we're just going to leave that panel there just unplug him here plug the other one back in same time of day of course that max apple uh, compare apples with apples right here we go the other device now the other panel sitting on yeah 12.9 so it's a little bit less you can see so it is slightly less efficient so that one's sitting at 13.3 remember and this is sitting at 12.9 so we're just about now, even if the sun's starting to come out and drop back in, we are you can see we are less than what the other one is. So it might have just made 13 now with a bit of a break in the sun. We'll check the current drawer on this one again. Make sure we swap the leads over the right ones. We don't want to be cooking our... Cooking anything, blowing fuse and stuff. Right, so we'll go back to current drawer. Let's see this one. Let's have a look. 1.1 amps, we've got uh, maybe one amp, we've got the sun out. All right, we'll do a third test. Let's have a look again with the other one. So we'll unplug him and check him again. Okay, here we go, back in the other one again. Positive, positive, let's check. Battery voltage, we won't worry about that, we'll do exactly the same as the other one. So here, make sure we've got set to voltage first. Okay, 
Okay, let's check that. Sitting at 13.04, so it is slightly higher. Let's check the current draw. Swap the lead over. Oh, it's pretty cold out here, people. Anyway, I should stop sucking it up, I suppose. Let's have a look. Amps, amps, let's check him again. 1.2, 1 1.23, 1 1.24. All right, 1.22. So you can see there is, a, there is a difference in efficiency. Now, whether you guys want to make the decision whether that efficiency is worth the change in dollars, as, uh, as mentioned earlier, these type of devices, um, these panels, sorry, are more expensive. I'm not going to go on the difference. However, you may see a 200 panel. You know, there might be a cheap version might be sitting around, you know, three to six hundred dollars, um, maybe a bit more. Um, the one here, you know, you you look in probably upwards uh, five to seven hundred dollars, maybe more. So it depends on the size of the panel. Depends on um, and don't quote me on those figures. Of course, it's up to you to. Um, to make your own decisions but for those that are interested i did get this one from the 12 volt shop northern 12 volt shop here in adelaide that's um uh quite a good shop look it up talk to the boys down there know what they're talking about and uh let me know what you think anyway all right um now those who are wondering before what the difference in in uh best time for putting your panels out so panels work on difference in heat and efficiency those kinds of things so what we're looking at is i would say spring and autumn probably best times and the worst time obviously is winter and also in the middle of summer is also not particularly good so uh although you're getting more light now you might argue that in the bottom of the um in the comments but uh interesting to hear your thoughts on it as well rightio summing up what have we found out today well in situation where we've just got one small battery this is only as i said 75 amp hour um and we've got differences in in light conditions it's probably a fairly good test the MPPT panel was putting out probably half an amp more than what the other panel was putting out although we are looking at a slightly larger panel the panel is also more efficient as well so what does that mean to me or what does that mean to you well for me it's a difference between using two panels and one panel so when I'm out in the bush especially over three to four days I get down to about 67 to 70 percent in battery capacity or charge level and that's in an area where we'd have some trees and some sunlight and some shade so that's typical of most people who are going to be out off-grid with the ATEM MPPT panel controller panel I also have the advantage of having Bluetooth control to uh, check what I'm getting out of the panel and also what I'm getting into the battery. Okay, uh, summing up, yep, I think it's a good product. Worth the money for me, my situation, yeah. Other people, make your own choice. Difference in cost is probably going to be a couple of hundred dollars, maybe a bit more. That might be worth the cost of some people changing uh, to um, a second panel. But for me, it's the weight saving as well. We're looking at double the weight for a pa for a, a panel that is slightly less in capacity, and for me that's that's quite a big thing for an older bloke. So um, make your own minds up. Anyway, uh, pleasure once again having you on the channel. Hit the like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, if you've got any questions about it, or you want to see a bit more testing, a bit more thorough testing, a bit more theory. Let me know. Uh, in the meantime. You guys have a great day and a shout out to those that are doing it tough in uh, Queensland, Sydney, Newcastle, Eastern Seaboard, uh, where they've got the floods at the moment. Hope you guys are all right. Stay safe and best wishes to you all. Tubby out.